if somebody owns a piece of land, for instance, at the moment that's been zoned residential and it's outside the special housing areas, you know, they don't specifically have to bring that to the market. They're the holding costs if they don't, but they don't have to. But is the government looking more broadly at the area of taxing um, the rental property investors, which the Reserve Bank says needs to be addressed, even if it's not necessarily a capital gains tax? Um, I haven't seen any formal proposals today, but I am aware that the Reserve Bank continues to talk to the government about about issues that seem to provide the advice to us. The language used by Deputy Governor Spence did seem to be stronger than we've heard um, up to now. I mean, he certainly sounded quite concerned about the risks to the economy as a whole that Auckland pre presents here. I mean, are you, are, are you sort of sensing that same level of urgency that the Reserve Bank is? Huh? No, I think he's been, he's been repeating what we've been saying at one level, which is to say, A, supply is the right way to resolve the problem. B, I think his, his main point was that you know, the bank's not likely to be raising interest rates, and this is general view given how low inflation is. And C, we have been saying that modest price increases is the right way forward, and actually large price increases you know, can be destructive long term for the market, because they can cause bubbles. So you never, things are never perfectly straight line in the housing market. I mean, we can all imagine they are, but house prices doubled under the previous government. Um, lots of parts of the world struggle with their house prices in major cities. There are just lots of different factors there. Um, and you can see that in Australia, where you've got an economy that's not performing that well at the moment, and you've still got very strong price increases in Sydney and Melbourne. It, this is not, you might think it's unique to New Zealand and to Auckland, but it's actually not unique. But how you can deal with it, I think, is, is in a considered way in the way that we are. But it will never be a perfect straight line, three percent increase every year. But it's not it's not unique, as you point out. And he actually made that point. But then he, he went on to say that New Zealand's the only one of the OECD countries that hasn't had a correction in the past forty years. Well, you see, there's a correction for forty five years, and, and that's probably right. Although, that is if, unique, if you look in two thousand eight nine, um, there certainly was you know a very it was a difficult period to sell a house. There was very low levels of new construction. I'm not, I'd have to go and check, but I'm not sure house prices actually went up. I mean, one of the reasons why you know, we probably haven't had a significant correction <coughs> is because uh, over the last uh, 45 years, it's because there's probably a general view that house prices are not overvalued you know, relative to you know, a whole lot of different factors. I mean, I, so you're saying you're still not overvalued? Well, I'm just saying that the, the market will always assess these things, not you know, not politicians, but. But if you look at the general demand, the general structure of Auckland, all of those things, I'm not saying prices shouldn't go up, but I'm just saying if the market truly believed they were massive overvalued, it wouldn't perform the way that it is. But the Reserve Bank hasn't said they are overvalued and the most highly overvalued in the world. So you're well, saying that's not true? Well, I'm just saying if, if that's the case and they haven't corrected it. Yeah. So how worried, on a 1 to 10 then, I mean, how worried are you that there might be a correction if things are not... Oh, look, it's a hypothetical question, I don't know. No, but yeah, I mean, you must expand on your discussions with... Abbott on the AIIB? Yeah, I mean, uh, the. Well, New Zealand's really been quite early in the piece. I know the Herald editorial said the opposite, actually, but they were quite wrong. I mean, we were actually ahead of Australia in terms of what was going on. Um, we've been saying quite some time we think it's the right thing to join, and one of the reasons we think it's good to join early on is to have influence in terms of the uh, governance process that sits around the AIIB. I don't think there's any doubt that it's going to provide an important um, tool for building infrastructure in Asia. That's absolutely important. And the more countries that are in, the better the governments will be uh, and the better the structure will be. So, yeah, we're working our way through, you know, before we get the final tick to make sure that the conditions that we've set are met. But we've been involved in at the very early level in terms of that working group that's been working through that structure. The inflation figures um, later, earlier today, said we had deflation in the March quarter and that annual inflation 0.1%. Yeah. How much longer can the Reserve Bank continue on with inflation below that 1 to 3% range it, before I really start? don't know. You have to ask him. When you had a drink with Prime Minister Abbott last night, did he sit or stump? He sits. Yeah. Um, and what about his request to the Christchurch Press? Yeah. Um, it's just around the bank at the park, and it looks like the insurance. Look, I think it's fair to say that the council is going through at the moment its long-term plan and the process of uh, trying to determine how best to meet its obligations 
and also its its vision for for Christchurch. I had you know, quite a reasonable discussion with Leanne Dills earlier yesterday afternoon actually about those issues. So um, I don't think it's a matter of us sort of holding their feet to the fire. I mean, there's a very good, positive and engaging <coughs> relationship between the government and the council. I mean, she raised with me yesterday the issues around insurance, but I don't think it's clear cut actually. I mean, ultimately, what will happen? I think there's a dispute between what the insurers believe the property can be fixed for and that process of how it will get fixed. That's the challenge for when it comes to the you know, land use part bill, I might say. But there won't be any sort of like dictate from the government, if you like, about the original plan being the holy ground. Well, we're trying to have a good constructive relationship with them. They're trying very hard in Christchurch, and there's a good job actually of trying to lead that debate. Uh, so. Yeah, of course there are hopes and expectations that all of this infrastructure can be built, but I don't think we're going to say, look, I'm just hoping you see you do this and, and we're going to be belligerent about it all with them. So the Māori Party asked you to raise Indigenous issues with um, Amy Abbott at all? No. Did you? Uh, Did you no. Like no, no, I believe I mean, he, he knows the process to see if that's it. Just back on Auckland Housing, so you're saying uh, the market's not broken, that it will correct if there's a problem. Well, what I'm saying is, as you're seeing prices go up, and I accept they're going up too rapidly, I mean, there's no argument about it. We've been saying that for quite some time, and all, all the increases are appropriate. But what you are seeing is a rapid increase in, in bulk up of supply. So the very the very reason that we're, we're now at the highest level of, of building construction for the last seven years is that those developers are seeing the demand there. So, so at one level, um, you saw that in Christchurch, you saw an increase in, in house prices, you saw a lot of building activity, and you've now got to the point where house prices have stabilised to about a 2% increase. So you do need to see, you know, those developers do need to see that demand curve. Now it's running faster than we would like it to, but I'm just saying there's, there's you, can have, you can have lots of debates about the, you know, the relative levels. It's like New Zealand's national debt levels at a, at a household level. There's lots of debates about whether those, you know, those levels of indebtedness are too high or too low. It depends on where you value assets and a whole lot of other things. But, you know, 45 years is a long period of time. If there hasn't been a correction over 45 years, it's an indication of the fact that at this point, for decades, there's been a general belief that they've been appropriately valued at the time. It doesn't mean they're not going up too rapidly or the government doesn't want to uh, help assist that dramatically by making sure there's more supply. But at another point, if there is a correction, it could be disastrous. Yeah, and that's the very reason why we're addressing the issue. I mean, there the, the are, the, the, and it's why you don't want galloping house prices for a long period of time, because it can lead to behaviour which could ultimately lead to a bubble being created. That's absolutely right. But the government's not sitting around on its hands. 90 of the 104 special housing areas are in Auckland. The amount of building activity is rising rapidly. Um, we're, we're undertaking reforms in areas like the RMA. We've made significant changes uh, to you know, the construction uh, area and the, the laws that govern that. So the government's not sitting back doing nothing, but it's, all I'm saying to you is it's not a perfect market in housing. Things take some time. And three or four years ago, um, you were struggling to sell a house in Auckland. Now there's a lot of demand, but it's not a new issue. House prices are still going up at a slower rate uh, under us than they did under the previous government. National inflation rates for houses are 5% for new builds and 5.9% uh, for Auckland. And happy night. Sorry, I have to go. Thanks for